Hello, in this video we're going to talk about counted loops. Specifically, counted loops are for loops. And these types of loops show up in a number of different programming languages. In terms of Python, we're going to look at a specific one to start with. It's called for in range loop. There's lots of variations of this and lots of different types we can play with to make life simpler. But for now, we're just going to focus on these types. The general structure is we have four, and then we have a variable which is going to act as our counting variable to keep track of how many times something is run. And then we have what's called a count, check, and change. This is terminology that's just kind of been adopted in my class, and we'll talk about how we use this when we look at an example. For loops tend to be used when we know in advance how many times the loop will run. And they're extremely useful for, for string and list processing, which we'll see in some later videos. So let's take a look at something we already know how to do. What we've essentially done is we've created a while loop that counts from 0 to 10. Pardon me, from 0 to 9. So I've created this counter, so this is my counter variable, which is keeping track of how many times the loops run. This is my um, loop structure, so this is my loop check. And we're just checking that CTR is less than 10. This is just printing something to screen. And this is my change. So notice we have we have a count, we have a check, and we have a change. And if we run this, sure enough, we get 0 through 9. And I can play around with this a lot of ways. I could set CTR to some other value to start. I could set it to negative 99 and make we make this 100. And now we're going to go from negative 99 to positive 99. And there it is. We won't scroll through all of them. I could make it go up by 2. And so I'm going to get every second number now. And what happened was, over time, programmers realize that, you know, this is great, but is there a way I can patch it, package this all into a nice little package? And sure enough, there was. And so we came up with this thing called a for loop. And a for loop is a loop where we take this count, check, and change, and we put it all together. And so let's make a for loop that's going to do the exact same thing as our first example did, and that is count from 0 to, to 9. So let's just take a second. We're just going to comment this out up here. Let's come down below. We'll comment that. There we go. So the way a for loop works is I say for, and now I'm going to set a variable which is going to act as my counter. We typically call it i, k, j, something short. And then we use the in range function. And now we set our count, our check, and our change. So what happens now is the count is where do we want this to start? So we want this to start at i is 0. And we want to continue as long as i is less than 10. And each time we want to increment i by 1. So if I now say print i and run this, you'll see that I get the exact same thing. I get counting from 0 through 9. So what happens here is we've simply taken and packaged all this stuff into one line to kind of clean up our code a little bit. So when we reach here, the first thing we do is we set i equal to 0, and then check if 0 is less than 10. If that's true, we enter the loop. If it's false, we skip the loop. Simple enough. But now when we get to the bottom of the loop, what we do is we apply the change. So i is equal to i plus 1. So in this case, i is going to equal 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. And then we, then we then check that i is less than 10, which is essentially saying is 1 less than 10. And sure enough, that's true. So we repeat. So at this point, if we find out that is true, we repeat. And if we find out that it's false, we exit the loop. And so this is a way of setting up situations where we want to loop a repetitive number of times. So if I want to change this maybe to count from, I don't know, negative 3 to positive 3, I'm going to start my counter at 3. And I want to reach positive 3, so I have to go 1 past it. So I'm going to go to 4. And then I give it a run. And there you go, negative 3 to positive 3. We can check this in a truth table. Pardon me, not truth table, just a tracing table here. And so sometimes people kind of write something out like this. Let me make a little table up. 
i is less than 4, and I'm going to do this based on the one above. And so the first time we get to this loop, i gets set to 0. Sorry, i gets set to negative 3. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say it's negative 3 less than 4, and that's true. So we enter the loop. Then we apply our change, negative 2 is negative 2 less than 4. That's true. We run the loop again. And that's going to continue negative 1 is negative 1 less than 4. True. I'm just going to finish this off here. I like things to line up. And finally, we reach 4, and is 4 less than 4? And of course, 4 isn't less than 4, and that's where our loop fails, and we exit our loop. So in each of these cases, when we evaluate to true, we run loop. Run, 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 run. And that's how a typical 4 in range loop works in Python. Now, something to point out, the thing about Python is they've tried to make things simpler so it's a more accessible programming language, and as such, they've kind of developed some rules you just have to know. And the first rule is that if this is a positive one, it's going to set the condition that i is less than, the count is less than the, the check. I can actually modify this loop slightly to count in reverse, and to do that, I simply set my 4, so I'm going to use 4i in range again. And I'm just going to set a different value. So I'm going to say in this case, 10 to 0. And instead, I'm going to say minus 1. So what this means is that my variable, my count, is going to be set to 10. My check is that I'm going to keep going as long as i is greater than 0, and my change is negative 1. So if I print i here, and let's just come on up here and let's comment out this one so we don't have to look at it. Comment that out that out. And we give this a whirl. Look at that, it counts down from 10 down to 1. Now remember, if I wanted to actually print out 0, I have to go 1 less than 0, which is negative 1. So let's just draw a truth, not a truth table, <laughs> just a tracing table again. Let's just change this slightly. I'm going to go 4 to negative 1. So the way the tracing table would look, look here is simply we'd set i we're going to say, is i greater than negative 1? Because of the fact that this change is negative, meaning we're counting down, we're going to check it against if it's greater than. So i starts out at 4. Is 4 greater than negative 1? That's true, so we enter loop. And then we're going to apply our change 3. Is 3 greater than negative 1? That's true, so we um, run loop. And then 2. Is 2 greater than negative 1? Sure enough, true, so we run loop. 1 is 1 greater than negative 1, true, so we run loop. And finally, 0 is 0 greater than negative 1, true, we run loop. Pardon me, finally, negative 1 is negative 1 greater than negative 1, and that, of course, is false, so we exit our loop. And that's what a 4 a for loop kind of looks like in Python in the most basic form. Now, like I said, there's lots of things we can do to kind of simplify this, to, to clean it up, some shortcuts, but for now we're just going to stick with this basic structure. And where this is particularly useful is when we want to assess each element inside of a string. And we'll talk about that in a later video. I hope this helped. Have a great day.